Welcome back to Library Trace YouTube channel. In today's class, I'm going to be learning how to make this beautiful corset dress. So it has this beautiful draped drape design on the cup area. It has a queen ant's neckline, as you can see, and it has these bony channels as well. It also has a basque effect on the waistline, and it has a simple sleeve. On the back, it has a keyhole on the back, and this is what the back looks like. It's a very simple tutorial, and it's really beautiful, as we have seen. If this is something you would like to learn, kindly stay tuned to the end of this tutorial. Thank you. Okay, so someone sent me this dress on Instagram and I really love the dress, so that's what we're going to be making today. So to make this, I'm going to be working with my ready-made bra cup. This is the measurement that I'm working with. The shoulder is 15, bust point is 10, under bust is 13 and half, bust is 38, waist is 28, half length is 19 and the full gown length is 42. So I'm working with this bra cup, it's a ready-made bra cup, the size is 38, it's written around this corner i don't know if you can see it so we're working with this bra cup of size 38 and we're going to be dressing it on our pattern you can also create your own cup as well but it's easier to work with this so that's what we're going to be working with and we'll be drafting our pattern using this bra cup okay it's easier that way although you can also create your own ready-made corset pattern which is going to give you freedom of the styles and everything you want because you can encounter a little bit of restrictions with this one which we're going to see later in this video so that's my shoulder points there i'm coming down one inch from my shoulder slope i'm taking my neckline measurement which is three inches so here is my shoulder slope so from there i'm going to mark my ham hole measurements my ham hole is nine inches so from the starting point here i'm marking nine inches and then the next measurement i'm going to mark is my under bust you actually don't really need your bust points because i'm going to be using my cup as my to create my corset cup so I'm not going to really need my bust points, but you can also put it there. So this is my under bust line, and this is my chest line, which is also my arm o line, okay? So from there, I'm going to take my waist line. That's my half length, which is 19 inches, okay? And then later, we're going to create our bust. So that depends on how low you want it to be in front. So now, the next measurement I'm going to be taking here is my bust measurement. The bust is 38 divided by 4 is 9.5. So I need that to create my ham hole line. So here I'm just going to place my ruler, my curved ruler, and then I'm going to draw out my ham hole. So this is my ham hole line. The next thing is to form our cup. So to form this cup, like I said, we are going to be using this bra cup very easy to do so you just need to measure your depth nonetheless the depth that you want depends on how okay you know it's like a sweetheart neckline so it depends on how deep you want this neckline to be that's going to be the depth of your neckline but you need to get that center line that we normally have for our corset so if you want your corset to have like one inch between each of the bra cups then you're going to mark half an inch so that by the time you double it, it's going to be one inch and you want it to be up to one and a half inches it means you're going to be marking 0.75 from your center front I want my space to be around half an inch so what i'm going to do is just to mark half an inch on my other bust and my chest line i'm just trying to create a straight line which is going to serve as a guide so i know my cup cannot go beyond this line 
so after that this is your underboss line and remember this has to sit on your underboss so you make sure that your crop is sitting on your underboss and then you can actually leave it like this if you want your cup to be normal regular straight cup but for this design it was actually tilted so you just tilt your cup anyhow you want how depending on how deep you want it to be like i said if you want it really deep you can tilt it up to this point so i'm just going to tilt my a little bit using this underboss and this 0.5 inches as my guideline okay so once i have what i'm comfortable with what i like which is this okay this depth that i have for my v i think it's okay for me so i'm just going to leave it like that and then i'm going to draw a mark so you don't want to press your cup like this just let it be okay so once you have it like this you go ahead now and then mark out what you have on that point so I'm just carefully holding my cup like that and then I'm marking what I have here. So now it stops around here. Now you can check the depth that you have. And this is around 11 inches, okay? So if it's too deep for you, what you just need to do is to raise it up a bit or you just create your cup. You can create your cup and not use this red bead cup just like we have it here. So now to create my yoke, I will need this hopper part as well so i'm just going to bring in the cup again and then i'm going to mark what i have my actual neckline okay following the cup that i have like that so now this is what it looks like so now remember we already have our shoulder slant like this so it's like a queen hands neckline so this is going to just tilt towards this side so depending on how you want it and i want all of my yoke to be on my cup so that it's going to be easy for me to turn it by the time we sew it you understand what i'm saying better so everything every yoke that i have is going to rest on this upper part of my cup it's not going to get to the bodies which is why i drew this line so now on this line that i drew here depending on what you want so from here i'm just going to mark around two inches to two and a half inches okay so if i'm marking two inches i'll have it like that and then i'm going to just connect that from my neck point to this to form my yoke okay so this is going to be my yoke and this is my buff so now i'll continue with my round measurement so now my waistline is 28 divided by 4 is 7 so now i have 7 inches here and i can see that it's very different from my from my bust so it's looking upward so i'm going to be adding one inch for that okay so now for this that i'm going to take my bust span measurement eight inches divided by two is four so i have four inches here i'm going to take the same four inches on this point as well and then i'll make it into a straight line so that i can create my dart so this is a basque corset so from your to, to create that v basque effect from your waistline you can go down by four inches to five inches depending on how deep you want the basque to be so i'm coming down by five inches for mine so there that's where my dart is going to stop that's why i'm reeling this now so now i'm taking this dart on my waist i'm taking a dart of half an inch on both sides remember i just added one inch so i'll take this dart on my basque line as well and then i'm going to connect them together on both sides and then i'm going to connect this to my under bust just like this so now on my waistline my waist is seven so i have around three and a half inches here so from here i'm going to continue and then i have my seven inches here so if you want to add allowance i'm going to add my same allowance to my bust and my waist and then i'm going to connect it okay so this is the pattern that i have so the next thing to do now is to create my v-shape for the bust so in order to create this i'm going to close this dart so i'm just raising this now and then i'm going to slap them on each other to create it if you don't do this you may have shortage so once you close your dart what you are going to do next is to take your ruler and then draw a v net line so that you can create your back line okay just like this so now i'm going to open it back 
so after drawing the back line now this is what i have so now to the back the back is simple it's just a regular back but this you can see my zipper allowance here you can use use a loop as well or you use your eyelets to lace it up i'm going to be working with a zipper so this is my neckline this is my neck which is three inches by one inch and this is the dart for the back just like we take our regular back dart and i've taken my waist and bust measurements as well so the only modification i'm going to do to this is my yoke i want the yoke i want the back to have a yoke as well just like the front so this person wants the yoke to be a big keyhole at the back so i'm going to be stopping the keyhole where my dart line is which is exactly here so what i'm going to do now using my ruler i'm going to place it like this and then connect from that point to my neck point here so that i can have a yoke with keyhole just like this okay so you can decide to form whatever keyhole that you want so now i'm going to be cutting this upper part off for my keyhole and then for my yoke and this is the lower part so this is what our pattern looks like now so i'm going to go ahead and cut it off so for the front i'm going to cut like this and then exclude my that okay so here i'm going to cut my cup line as well okay here it just comes like this okay forgot to mention that so from that 0.5 inches it's just going to come straight like this so i'll cut this out as my center front and then here is going to be my side front so you just cut following the line that you have already drawn and then from here i'm going to cut out my cup as well so this is my side front and then this dust that i have is not part of the pattern so i'm going to cut it off okay so this is the center and this is the side so the next thing to cut is my yoke so now to cut my yoke, I'm just going to follow what I have left. You don't need that cup area. You don't need this area because it's going to be replaced with your ready-made bra cup. So I'm just going to cut our yoke and then leave the rest. So now the yoke is quite small, so it's very important for you to label it so that I don't get it mixed up. So this is my yoke now. And this is my main bodies so for the back as well what I'm going to do first is to remove my yoke okay so I'm going to separate my yoke from my upper bodies and then I'm going to go ahead so if you're going to be using a button you can leave this allowance but I'm going to be using a bra hook here so from here I'm just going to go ahead and cut out my keyhole design okay so now you can cut your dart off completely or you can simply just close your dart like this so for the front as well you can cut the dart or you close it so i'm just going to close my back dart with my masking tape so that i'll have it as just one single piece okay and this is my this is my yoke just like this so you can see the keyhole that we created there okay so like i said you can close the front that as well or you leave it as just two pieces so if you want to close it because of the dust that we took here it may have a little bit of gaping here so you can see that it is not well aligned so what i'm going to do if i want to close this is just to measure what i have here as xx it's very little it's about quarter of an inch okay so it's just around quarter of an inch so the quarter of an inch i'm just going to go over to the side like this and then mark it there and connect it to my under bust so that i can easily chop it off okay so that's what you can do that's if you want to have it as one single piece so now after cutting it off on this side i can easily use my masking tape to close my dots together to so have just one single piece 
so now this is what my front looks like as well now so now this is my yoke i'm going to go ahead and cut all of this this is the back i'm going to go ahead and cut all of this on my fabric and my lining i'm going to fuse interfacing to the ones that i'm going to be fusing interfacing to and then i'll bring it back to show us what it looks like so i have cut out my patterns on my fabric and then i added half an inch allowance all round okay so this is what the front looks like and this is what I'm going to be using for my lining. So I cut it the same way I cut my main bodies. And these are the two back panels, okay? And then I cut my back as um, I cut my back lining the same way I cut the main fabric as well. So I'm using a chiffon fabric. So if you're using a fabric like mine, I advise that you had your interfacing first before you cut on your pattern because the fabric is very shaky and soft. So you may it may not give you exact exactly what you want on your pattern if it is not stabilized with an interface like this. So this is what the back look like and this is the lining and these are my two yokes. So this is the yoke for the back. For my yoke, I am using the same fabric as main fabric and lining. Okay. So this is what I have. This is my yoke for back and yoke for front. So now I'm going to set this aside and work on my boning channels. And if you notice, this basque effect, I only have it in front. There is no basque at the back, especially if you want to add boning to your back. You don't want the boning to get to your hip area or your butt so that you can sit comfortably. That's why my back is just stopping on the waistline and then I have my basque alone in front but if you want to have basque in your front is your back as well is okay you may consider using a boning that is very soft i'm using a plastic boning for mine so you can also use a, a soluble boning a red line boning for yours if that is what you prefer but i want to use plastic boning so to do this i need to create casing for my boning so i just cut out this fabric i added my interfacing to stabilize it this is about one and a half inches and then i folded a quarter of an inch on both sides so just make sure that whatever you have at the end of the day your boning can easily go through it okay your boning should be able to go through it so the next thing you need to do now is to mark out your boning channels you can have one at the center and then one each on each of the sides or you can have one at the center and then have two each depending on what you want i think i'm going to be adding five boning channels to this front so whatever it is that you do on one side you just need to put it on fold and then you notch where you want the boning to be so that you have the same thing on both sides so what i'm going to do now is to take this to the sewing machine now and then i'm going to sew my casing okay i'm going to sew my casing on this before i insert my boning so i'll go ahead and do that now so i have added my channels you can see let me just turn to the wrong side so that you can see what the channel looks like so now like i said i'm working with this plastic boning so if it's a regular line boning you can just wrap your boning and sew directly on it but you cannot sew on this so i'm just going to go ahead and insert my boning inside these channels okay so you can iron this boning before or you just iron it when you finish inserting everything you iron it together with your with your dress okay so now when you are inserting this you make sure you leave half an inch to sew your cup so remember we are still going to sew our cup inside this cup space and then you are going to join the lower part as well so you leave half an inch upwards and half an inch on this side because you cannot actually sew on this boning so what i'm going to do now is to wrap this edge with my masking tape because it's quite sharp okay so now i'm going to wrap it just like this and then i'll make sure that i have half an inch on this side you can see i can feel my half an inch on this side and then i'm going to measure around half an inch here too before i cut it okay so now after cutting on this side as well i'm going to you can also burn it just make sure that it's not too sharp okay so i'll do the same thing to this side as well and then i'll insert this to all of my channels i have just five channels you can have more or less depending on what you want okay so now i'll fill this up now 
so i have inserted all my bonings to my channels now and you can see how neat it is looking so if you want to fix boning to your back as well this is the exact same way you are going to create channel but for this tutorial i will just i may just put illusions but i'm not going to insert bone into the back okay this is just for tutorial purpose so this is what i have so far the next thing now is to insert my cup but to insert the cup remember there is a wrap okay the cup is draped so now we're going to drip on this cup i have a detailed tutorial on how you can drip on cup already on the channel so if you don't know how to do that you can check it out but we are still going to do this roughly in this tutorial so to do this you just need your cup the fabric you are going to use to drip on it and you need pins lots of pins so the beginning now you are going to hold this you can see the way i'm this is my cup and this is my fabric i'm just holding this i'm still going to use my lining to turn it so i'm not turning it with this that's why i have not finished this edge so i'm just leaving it like this and then i'm holding my starting point with my pin on both sides so after holding it on both sides the next thing is for you to start splitting it okay so you start dripping on it you can just put it down to make it easier for you you make your first drip okay so once you make your first drip you lift it up again and then you pin it in place Okay, the second one you drape and pin so when you are draping this one you make sure it is firm don't drag it too much to in order not to spoil the shape of your cup but at the same time you don't want it loose like this so that you not lose your drip so you make sure it is firm and it is exactly where you want it to be so once you have what you like you just go ahead and pin so now that first drape is done you put it down again you make the next drape okay so after making the next drape you lift the first one up you pin and then when you're making the second pin you make sure you use that to adjust it to what you want and you make sure it is as firm as possible so once you have it firm you go ahead and pin again so after pinning it you, you put it down again you make your next drip so that's how you're going to cover the entire you can see now we have about two to three pleats already so that's how you keep placing it till you cover the entire space okay so now i have dripped it completely and this is what i have this is what it looks like on the inside so what you are going to do now is take this to your sewing machine with your pin don't remove your pins yet take it to your sewing machine and then you see this line that you see on your bra cup you go ahead and sew round the line so after you sew round the line the stitch will just hold the drapes for you you can now remove your pins and then we'll bring it back to see what you so you are going to sew from the upper part to the sides to the bottom and then back you sew all around it so that you can hold your drip in place like this so i have gone ahead to sew it round as you can see now i can cut off the excess that i have so what you just need to do is to pick your scissors now and then you just cut around it as close as possible so that you have just your cup okay so after this now we work on our yoke because i want to turn the yoke together with the cup so now on this upper part as well i'm going to cut off the excess that i have so what you have done to this cup you go do the same thing to the other cup i have done mine and you make sure that as much as possible your pleats are even okay you want that to come out really nice so this is what my cup looks like now for my yoke I just place them against each other right side facing right side so for the back you are going to sew it on the neckline as well as the keyhole area so let me explain with this so you sew it here and then you sew on the keyhole area after that you turn it out and then you iron it just like I have done like this okay so this is for my back yoke and then for the front yoke it's simpler you just need to cut it you just need to sew on the neckline area remember it's a queen ant neckline this is the upper part so this part here that is exposed is what i'm going to sew i'm not going to turn the armhole area because i'm still going to hide the sleeve to it and then the lower part by the time you sew it to the cup and you turn everything out it's going to be turned out for you so this is the first neck for the the first yoke for the front and this is the second yoke okay so this one is going to look like so now i'm going to bring my cup and then i'll sew my yoke to where it's supposed to be on the cup remember it's supposed to be like that 
the cup is bent like this so your yolk is just going to come you can see the v shape that we have with our cup our cup is supposed to be v shaped like this and then the yolk is just going to come like this so i'll go ahead and sew but before i sew now i'll cut lining to cover my cup so in case you don't want to fix lining for your cup what you just need to do before you drape it at all you place your fabric like this okay your fabric and then you sew so by the time you sew it now and then flip to the right side to start dripping on your cup this part is going to be neat so that is if you don't want to turn it like i am turning mine but i'm going to be turning mine with my fabric so for the lining you can either do a mollage before you drape your cup there is a tutorial on that as well on the channel or you just cut your fabric so i'm going to cut my fabric in a circular form like this so i'll fold into two and then i'm going to fold into four okay so after folding like that i'm going to bring my tape now and then mark around around four and a half to five inches all right just like you want to cut your flare the only difference is that this is not going to have a radius so now i am marking around it and then i'll make i'll mark everything together and then cut out so after cutting it out you have something like this it's going to look like a circle so now while it's still unfolding to two i'm going to note the midpoint of this okay so the middle point is going to be around here and then on the upper part and the lower part i'm going to go in by one inch so that i can create depth remember you're going to use this for a cup so now if i go up by one if i go up by one on the both side i'm going to link it back to my to my center so to do this you can actually put this on fold so that you can cut the two sides together so after linking it up like this, I'm going to bring my scissors and then I'll cut it up. So now, when you cut it up, this is what it looks like. You can see now that you have shaped it. So I'll take it to the sewing machine now and then sew like this, then bring it back. So now I have sewn this. The next thing you want to do now is to iron this properly. Okay, you're going to iron it. So after ironing it, you open your stitches. We'll continue with our sewing so now i'm just ironing it okay so now to turn it what i'm going to do first is to sew my yoke to my to my um to the bust okay so i'm going to sew it on this area you leave half an inch to join this back to your bodies so now i'll go ahead and flip like this and then i'm going to sew so my yoke is sewn now as you can see it's going to be like this the next thing now is to lay the lining on the cup like this okay so i'm going to lay it on the cup like this and then i'm going to go ahead and then sew so that i can sew the cup neatly so you can pin it down so that you will sew on this side that you already have your seam line so now this method that i used to cut my lining there are several methods you can use to wrap your bra up you can use mollage if you want your exact shape you can see that we still have xx with this method so if you want your exact cup shape you can use your paper tape to wrap it there's a tutorial on how to do that on the channel as well so you can check it out so i'll go ahead and sew this now but while sewing it i'm going to add my emming gum to it so that it can glue everything together for me by the time i flip and turn it so i have gone ahead to sew it you can see my emming gum so what i'm going to do now is to cut off this excess that i have or this upper part okay so because of how thick the foam is you can go ahead and open up your lining like this now and then top stitch on your lining or you just use your your iron okay i'm going to bring my tailor's ham now and then i'm going to iron it because of the emming gum that has that i have attached to it is going to help it stick together okay so i have ironed it down now so to lay this as well i'm going to cut more emming gum and then i'm going to put it inside so now i'm going to push my cup inwards like this so that this lining part comes out and then again i'm going to use my lining my iron to glue them together so that everything is going to stay firm just like this so i'll use my iron tool so i have ironed it as you can see the excess that i have here i'm just going to cut it off and if you push it inwards now you can see now that it is well laid and then you go ahead and iron your drapes as well so now after cutting this off the next thing is to bring my main bodies and then sew this to the cup area 
so this is the main bodies now and just go ahead now and sew this to my main bodies just like this so it is sewn now and you can see what we have this is what it looks like on the inside you can just pin it first before you sew around so now one side is done the next thing is to do the same thing we have done to this side i'm going to go ahead and repeat it on this side as well so I have drawn the curve for the other side as well. Just leave a little space here so that you can turn it neatly. So this is what it looks like on the inside. If you are not turning it, you just search this space. But for me, I'm going to be using this lining to turn it out. So this is what you want it to look like by the time you are done. So you just flip it like this now and then you run your stitch and turn it. So that's for the back, for the front. And then for the back, I've gone ahead to sew my yoke. Remember the yoke, the key will start from the dart area so you just make sure you notch that part if you forgot to notch it just take your pattern and place it on the dart so that you can notch it so now i've sewn my keyhole to it and this is what it looks like i have done for the other side as well and this is what it looks like you can see our keyhole so what you just need to do now is to place the back lining as well on it and then you sew it so that you can use it to turn it out. So you just sew it here and the zipper area and then you flip. So I'm going to do this now. So my lining is fixed now. As you can see now, we have turned it neatly. So it can be a bit difficult. So to make it easier for you, you can remove your boning first. But then when you finish turning it, you fix your boning back. Another way you can do it is not sew your lining to the cup. Remember when we finished making our cup, we turned the cup separately and then sew it to the bodies before we turned everything with lining. So what you can do is sew your lining. The, cup, the, the cup, lining of your cup to the lining of the body so that you can turn everything now together it will make it easier for you but to do this you have to get your exact cup measurement for your lining okay remember our own was in excess and we trimmed it off later so you have to get the exact measurement of your cup for your lining and the way you can get this is by making a mullage there is a tutorial on that so if you can get a mullage so that you have your exact cup and then you use it to turn it out easily so so you can turn everything neatly and it will make the work easier for you so this is what the front is looking like now the back is also turned and high on as well so you can see so now i have turned my back and it is neatly ironed so this is what the first side looks like and then this is what it looks like on the other side so here i'm just going to add a press button for me to be able to button it down and then here there's going to be a zipper on this side to hold it together so what i'm going to do next now is to sew my shoulder together okay so i'll bring it now and then sew the shoulder together so after joining the shoulder i'm going to go ahead and join my side seam as well before we sew the lower part okay so i have sewn my shoulder together you can see now that the shoulder is neatly sewn for both sides so i just held my this place the back with a pin i'm going to fix a safety a um, bra hook there okay so this is what my shoulder looks like now and then on this side i want to, to sew this side with the allowance that i left so this is what i have now and then if you turn it out this is what it looks like you can see how beautiful it is looking already so now the next thing to do is to measure around your waistline remember we have a basque in front and then the back is just a regular straight waist so you measure around all of this now and the measurement that you have you either multiply it by two or three inches i've measured around mine and i have about 32 inches so the 32 inches i'm multiplying it by three and i'm approximating that to 100 so i'll go ahead and cut a fabric of 100 inches okay and the length is going to be my full length remember the full length that we started with was 42 inches okay i showed us in the beginning my full length is 42 inches and then my half length is 19 so if you subtract 42 from 19 you're going to have 23 inches so with allowance i'm going to have two inches and that's going to leave me with 25 inches so i'm gonna have to cut my fabric of 100 inches in width by 25 inches in length so i'm going to gather all of this to my waistline now i'm going to gather it so it's going to be a little longer 
on the front waist because of this basque that we have here but i don't want it to be short that was why i used my half length to calculate the length and not this basque length that we have here i don't want it to be too short at the back so now i'll go ahead and gather all of this to my waistline and after that i'm going to fix my zipper on the allowance you can see we have a zipper allowance here i'm going to fix my zipper on the allowance and then fix maybe a basic sleeve to this i'll do all of this now because this video is already very long i'll do all of this and bring it back to show us what it looks like okay so this is what the corset dress looks like after attaching the gathered parts to the lower side and i also fixed a zipper and my basic sleeve on the sleeve as well you can see how beautiful this dress turned out and how simple it is to make it you just need to carefully watch the video and i'm sure you will get it i hope you enjoyed making this beautiful dress with me if you enjoyed it let us know in the comment section like comment and subscribe to our channel and i will see you in the next one bye